Snowpack is really important to forests because it provides soil moisture through much of the year. And so and as climate changes and snowpack diminishes, we're seeing really dramatic changes in forest dynamics. The role of snowpack in, in water limitation for these trees is that for much of the winter, the water is tied up in snow. It's not doing anything in terms of going into the soil, but the trees also aren't photosynthesizing. They're not growing. As the snow begins to melt and temperatures increase and they begin to grow, they need access to the water. And it's sort of a, a slow time release of water across the summer season. In the Pacific Northwest, we get very, very little precipitation in the summer. So these trees actually rely on that snow to kind of put water into the soil for them to use across the summer. Climate change will influence the snowpack in this area by decreasing how much snow there is because more will fall as rain, but it will also increase the length of the snow-free season. So spring will come earlier, fall will come potentially later. So the, the length of the, the snow-free season will increase, the length of winter will decrease. A degree or two of warming can really affect the amount of snow that accumulates during the course of the winter and it also affects when the snow melt begins in the spring. What you see over time is a general shift in western North America toward uh, an earlier peak in the snow accumulation season and then an earlier beginning of the melt season. If the snow melts sooner, the soils dry out sooner, the trees dry out sooner, and if the trees dry out then they're more susceptible to wildfire. As we see the effects of climate change on snowpack and the lengthening of the snow free season and the, the decline in soil moisture, we might expect to increase the frequency of fire and increase the size of fires as well. With respect to insect attacks, and particularly mountain pine beetle is the one that we're concerned about here, as soil moisture declines, the trees become less able to fend off insect attacks and it increases the probability that insect attacks will actually kill the tree. And that's perfect fuel for the rapid spread of fire. The parks themselves are going to change rapidly in many cases and very seriously in some cases. What we'll see is more evidence of fire, more evidence of disturbance. We'll see fewer glaciers. We'll see lower stream flows in summer, so some of these waterfalls, for example. A lot of people come here to see older forests, or especially high elevation forests. People like alpine meadows. As it becomes more favorable, you actually might get trees moving into alpine meadows. And if that's where people like to spend time, then potentially that's an issue. It's possible that a lot of the species that are already sort of on the brink, that are, are threatened species because of habitat loss, uh, may actually become even closer to extinction if their habitats begin to dwindle. If there's an agency that has the public support to do what needs doing in terms of adapting to climate change, it's probably the Park Service. The Park Service's role in climate change, particularly here in the Northwest, is looking at a dramatic indicator of things changing to confirm that we're heading into new territory. It's difficult to predict how soon glacials will disappear from these mountains. We have some pretty big glaciers and it's going to be perhaps a century or more before we lose all of our glaciers, but we'll lose a lot of their ecological importance long before then. Any global environmental change throughout geologic time has produced some good things and some bad things. The sorts of changes that we're seeing now and that we predict that will come will affect different species different ways. Some will win, some will lose. 
It will affect different societies. It will affect different economic slices. There will always be winners and losers no matter what happens, global warming or if there were some way to produce global cooling. That would have winners and losers as well. So I'm optimistic that technology research and policies will steer us toward a lower carbon future that will keep us uh, away from the sort of most unmanageable consequences. But how it is felt by human society and economy really depends on how the policies and institutions are prepared to deal with a warming world.